Hello and welcome to On and Off the Pitch. I hope you're well. This is a bonus pod looking at the new and incoming manager, Amarin. Amarin Fireworks, as his sporting Lisbon team set alight Manchester City in the Champions League, uh, causing Pep Guardiola to shake his head on numerous occasions. The result it was would no doubt signal what could be what could be for Manchester United fans and Manchester United players, the excitement, the buzz, the draw. Ooh, all of the fans were giddy, uh, doing cartwheels, somersaults, backflips, breakdancing, body popping, jive, all of that stuff. Even the good old Strictly quickstep, they were doing it all. But the realities between what could be and what will be are very, very different. Uh, he is going to come in, come in, come on in, Amorin. Uh, if you know, you know. Uh, he's going to come into Manchester United, uh, a team which, uh, and not even so much a team, a club which took its time to make a decision on a manager that they had held a review on months ago, months ago. And despite uh, the club the team winning an FA Cup final, uh, it would it was pretty much clear that the the standards that Manchester United former players held the club to and some of the fans were not being met and were nowhere near enough in terms of what was required from the players or the club. Uh, that was clear and 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 it lay squarely at the feet of the manager. So in terms of the manager that has gone, goodbye, Eric, I hope all is well. Uh, and for the new manager, Amorin, who's coming in, uh, everyone's cock a hoop. But the reality, as I've said, is very, very different. Uh, his way of playing is a flat back three or five, depending on how much possession you have of the ball. Now, his sporting Lisbon team, and I say his because he's not due to actually take over from Manchester United until, I believe, maybe the 10th or the 11th of November. So there is some time yet for things not to change, but before that becomes an actual absolute. Uh, there is style of play. There is personnel. There is the ability uh, for this new manager, this young manager who has won things in Portugal to get to grips with a, a squad which is um, filled with with talent that so many of the fans and some former players say are not good enough. The Ineos crew who spent the bulk of the summer on their bikes going around the local pelodrome, or velodrome, should I say, uh, Gave him a new contract, extended his contract, bought in players that he'd um, he'd worked with before, uh, bought in players that people are now questioning and saying they're not good enough or or they may not be good enough. I don't know why. It's still early days for this this player who plays in an advanced midfield role, a uh, second striker, Zerzi. Uh, everyone is now saying that uh, some of those players aren't good enough, and this manager will have to get rid of players from the outside looking in, I have never known people with money be, be money stupid as much as football owners and those that actually inject cash into a club. They spent months, Ineos, months insulating themselves in terms of the team that they would bring in to make all of this seem seamless, be more professional, uh, have a better approach in terms of recruitment, et cetera, et cetera. And they have, in no uncertain terms, cock this up. So with it being December, post bonfire night day, that the fireworks that everyone saw on the 5th of November between Sporting Lisbon and Manchester City, they are now expecting this to take place going forward for Manchester United and bringing the club back to the heady days where they were all singing, all dancing, all stars. The distance between what's currently on top of the league and teams who are playing good football or other teams within the league who are not near the top but are also playing good football is about consistency, it is about team structure, but more importantly, it's about player application. Post E, Eric Ten Hag's 
um, departure, post his departure, we saw a very concerted effort from the United players. How long will it last? Then we read in the press, and rumours are the thing of, you know, the news itself, that some of the players want Ruud van Nisseroy to stay along and Darren Fletcher to stay along because he's part of the coaching team and they really, really get along, you know, with these guys and 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 they can help them be better players and and, and the club can kick on, as is the phrase that has been used frequently. And the, the realities are there are so many hangers-on at that club. There are so many hangers-on at that club that you think, what do you add? What value do you add? I mean, considering the vast salary that Sir Alex Ferguson was picking up as an ex as a non executive director, I mean, wow, where can you where can I apply for that job? So for the new manager coming in, we can only but hope for him that he is able to uh, bring some good fortune to a team, which is you know, you know, in spite of all of what is said about how great Manchester United are as a club, they are an okay team. They're not a good team. They're not a great team. They're an okay team. Uh, and there are players there, not necessarily the young players, because we cannot focus on them, but there are established players that a young manager will no doubt be expected to uh, massage, persuade or lock horns with so that the club can move forward in the right direction. It will be very early days and it would be unfair for any Manchester United fan to expect too much of him within uh, what remains of this season or within the next 12 months because there are there is work to be done and any manager likes to bring in their own team just like a chef likes to work with a particular team when you go to your favourite restaurant if one component of the kitchen team is not there the meal's slightly off the curry sauce isn't necessarily to the, the same thickness isn't into the same intensity you know all of these things play a part the ingredients has to be right for the output, the cake, the main meal, call it what you will, to be of the standard that everyone says this is great and they go away and they talk about it consistently. I have no doubt that this young manager uh, will be given, and I hope I hope that I say I've no doubt, I hope that he will be given the chance to uh, get his feet under the table and understand the way of Manchester United and people will say that you know this is a big club and he's not in Portugal well the realities are I think that Manchester United have recruited a manager who is playing in the Champions League and they're not in the Champions League so you know this kind of this this hierarchical positional talk that some may have about the club being big They've had to go and get a manager who's managing in the Champions League. The club, the team are not in the Champions League. They're nowhere near good enough to be in the Champions League. And in, in terms of the Premier League position, the club itself is showing everyone where they are and where and, and not even so much where they're, they're meant to be, where they are. Not necessarily meant to be there. It, is, it, it works out the way it works out. Uh, I do hope that this new, uh, this new manager is given the time. I do hope he's given the support. And I do hope that when it comes to player acquisition and the players that he is being asked to work with, that there is a, realis a realistic expectation, or should I say a realistic understanding of what he's able to do within the time frame that he has been given or that he has now landed in. Uh, there is only one Hansi Flick. And uh, we know where he is. Uh, Amarin, who's now come in, is a very different kettle of fish. Uh, and we will see how quickly some of those who backed Eric Ten Hag uh, will start to, 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 you know, bring back some of those familiar topics of conversation about we need to have a young player coming through, we need to work through the academy, we need to bring all of these players through, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the realities are uh, 
if you're going to go down that route, then you need to back the club wholeheartedly. And not then if there is a blip, if there is a draw, if there is a defeat, if there aren't enough goals scored that uh, the call for we need to sign world-class players because this is a, a, a big club that doesn't come back into the fore because spending money in, in, in a team, uh, spending money on a team, that has spent loads of money just to bring them to a position where they are more than just okay is a really silly thing to do. And uh, as a fan, you can't expect people to continually to be silly, especially with their money. What, what, what do we hope for this man? I don't know. I don't know. The reality is that uh, um, Manchester United are where they are. They're an okay club. And uh, just reflecting back to Eric Ten Hag, I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it would have been easier for Manchester United to have moved brick by brick to Holland to have maintained the success that they crave so much. Definitely in the league and probably some, you know, Champions League success in terms of fixtures. Because where they are now, they are, they are nowhere near, nowhere near, any of that at all and that's the reality of the situation uh, this is a bonus one uh, I'm looking forward to the games this weekend uh, it will be something uh, to behold uh, I saw uh, something really good actually that in terms of uh, the Champions League I, I believe that uh, on uh, I think it's on social media uh, Paris Saint-Germain the Ultras did something absolutely fantastic holding up a flag with regards to the ongoing genocide and uh, and, and all power to them because uh, we are all very lucky for those of us who watch football and for those of us who get slightly uptight and irated and annoyed about a team not scoring goals or losing. Uh, at least no one is actually losing their life while watching football, or well, hopefully not anyway. Uh, so there is that. Anyway, bonus pod over. I hope you're well wherever you are. Stay safe. Uh, this is On and Off the Pitch. I'm RC. Free Palestine. Won't stop. Won't stop.